We got a brand new Creed movie, Creed 3. It's time to review it. Let's go. Creed 3 stars Michael B. Jordan, Tessa Thompson, Jonathan Majors, and is directed by Michael B. Jordan. What's up, guys? Time for a brand new 2023 review. Um, this is kind of a controversial review for me because I did state that I will not be watching this movie. I'm putting that out there right, right now. During all the, the hoopla with the Stallone drama and everything, maybe call it a knee-jerk reaction. But then I got to thinking about it and I, I'm like, who am I really mad at? I'm, I guess I'm mad at the Winklers. I'm not mad at Michael B. Jordan. You know, Michael B. Jordan, this is his baby. You can tell that he's passionate about the character of Adonis Creed and its legacy. And I think there is a legacy to be had with that character. Um, I think he proved himself with the previous two movies. Having said that, you know, I still stand firm that I do believe that Stallone was kind of screwed over. Okay? And, and I'm not going to go into all that. I've done, I think, two videos on that. And I'm not going to lie, my curiosity did, did get the best of me with this movie. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested in the character of Adonis and seeing what's going forward, okay? But one thing I definitely wanted in this movie was to not completely discard Rocky as a, you know, a, 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 a pivotal moment in Adonis's stepping stone in his career. And you know what? It's hard admitting when you're wrong. And I think I was wrong to make that knee-jerk reaction saying, I will not watch this movie, okay? I still feel very clouded about it. I really wish that uh, it was in Stallone's good graces. I'm not saying Stallone had to be in this movie. They closed that chapter with Creed II. And I was fine with it back then. I just wish that, you know, Stallone would have been able to, to say, hey, this new movie, I'm a producer. I'm really happy for you guys to see it. Okay, so enough of that stuff out of the way. First off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis in this spoiler-free review. One thing I didn't know about this movie is that uh, Adonis has retired. You know, the beginning of the movie, they show his final fight. Because this is a spoiler-free review, I'm not going to go into like, who, who that final fight is. Not that it really matters. So he's been retired. He owns this, uh, this gym, and I think just like a string of gyms, you know, and He's an entrepreneur now. He's taking on uh, all these young boxers, sort of like a Don King type figure that's even joked at in the movie. And so he does have this guilt about this past relationship, this past friendship that he had with this character Damien played by the great Jonathan Majors. We're already calling him the great. He's proven himself as Kang the Conqueror. And you know what, guys? I'll say this too right now. Uh, I don't like Ant-Man at all, but he was really great, okay? You can try to play his performance down like I've seen some channels try to do. Bullshit. He was great. It, you don't have to, to yell and holler, and, and sometimes you don't even have to project. Sometimes just your essence in a performance can show how dangerous you are. And man, does he do that in that uh, Ant-Man movie. The rest of the movie was pointless, but Jonathan Majors? earned his key. But Damien goes to jail and Adonis, you know, becomes Adonis that we all know. And uh, his career has flourished. He is a mega millionaire now. And it's got to be tough when you spent 18 years in prison and then you get out and you have to see your best friend, uh, you know, flourish like he did. So of course Adonis wants to take him kind of under his wing. Uh, he feels guilty. And that is a big message of this movie. A big theme of this movie is forgiveness and guilt and how we deal with that. And I think from a psychological standpoint, this movie tackles that idea quite well, actually. I don't think it goes deep enough and we'll get into the cons, but I left feeling good about the message that they were trying to convey. So eventually Damien starts fighting and Adonis you know, he feels all this guilt and sometimes guilt can cause you to make the wrong decision or just be premature with the decision and he lets him have a title fight. And so from that point on, I guess the story goes down in more of a darker path and Adonis is confronted with it all. Now, let me start with the pros in this movie. And I think the biggest pro is the fight scenes. The, the choreography is really uh, unique, which is important uh, amongst the Rocky franchises. Look guys, Rocky IV, the fight between Rocky and Ivan Drago, is the greatest fight ever put on screen, okay? 
It really is. Stallone, even, he said, I'm not bragging. I just know the work that went into that fight. It is. It's the greatest fight ever put on screen, you know, boxing fight. And I was there, opening night, in the theater. Still to this day, I've never, ever seen a crowd react to a fight scene like that. They literally stood up, I shit you not, and were fist pumping. It was insanity. And I've never seen it to this day, okay? Did that happen during this fight? I can't really answer that because I was at a press screen. So there was only a few of us. But there was nobody like hooting and hollering. There was nobody like, yes! It was still really cool. And I, you know, I think there was a message that uh, Michael B. Jordan was trying to stress during the fight scenes. And, and when you see the movie, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. Especially during the fights with Damien. But, you know, remember those, like, the slow motion moments that you have in the Rocky movies to kind of heighten the emotion? Uh, there's definitely some of those in these fight scenes. It, it, can, it can be there to heighten the emotion, but it, it can also be there from, like, a strategic standpoint. Treating the fight kind of like a chess game and figuring out how to fight his opponent. So they slow things down just to kind of show his next move in his head. So, and it's really cool, actually. They're beautifully shot. I mean, wow. Also, I really like Jonathan Majors in this movie. Um, I think I wanted more of him, and I think that's a good sign, you know? Um, I think, given the character that he is, I think they could have went further with the, uh, the anger and the emotion. I, I, they touched on it, but I don't think they went deep enough. I guess I'm kind of, you know, one foot in the pros and one foot in the cons, but Jonathan Majors did nothing wrong he he acted the part he stated the lines that were on the script i just wish there would have been more of it but i mean as far as like facial expressions i think jonathan majors is one of the best actors working today with being able to convey a message not even saying a word he's that good also um speaking of rocky there's very few I guess, Rocky moments, you know, love of Rocky. You'll see like maybe a picture of him in the background in the gym that's blurred out. And then there's like a line that Adonis says early on in the movie. That's about it, okay? And yeah, I know this isn't Rocky's story. This is uh, Creed's story. No problem with that. And I will say, even in the pros, there is a, a, like a, an approach that this movie takes that is very similar to the very first movie. For spoiler's sake, I'm not going to state what it is. You'll know exactly what it is. I mean, they stress it when they get to the part. I mean, and there's a part where uh, Damien mentions Rocky. And I got goosebumps. I was like, oh, that's cool. I really like that. That's really cool. But I'm not going to lie. Of course, I would have wanted a little bit more Rocky love in this movie. Uh, for sure. Especially concerning Adonis and his past and his, uh, you know, his rise. You know, kind of Rocky is kind of like the custom auto. Uh, to Adonis. You don't really get too much of that in this. Even if the guy's not in the movie, I think they should have had maybe some moments in the, you know, I guess the last act of the movie where, you know, you know, the message is starting to get driven home. And there were moments where I was like, they could really hit me, you know, in the, in the fields if they um, applied Rocky to this particular part. Not, not the character himself in the part, but just a mention of, you know, how important he was. And uh, it felt like it was missing. It really did. Now, really getting into the, the cons, um, this is not a Ryan Coogler movie. And, and I applaud Michael B. Jordan for stepping behind the camera. I believe this is his first time for a, a full-length movie. I can see the passion there. I just don't see the talent that Ryan Coogler has. And I think that was evident throughout the movie. It didn't have more of like a director's signature on it like Ryan Coogler. Like when I watch a Ryan Coogler movie, I'm like, that's, that's Ryan Coogler. He just has that talent. And very few directors, to be fair to Michael B. Jordan, have what directors like Ryan Coogler have. Like Scorsese has, you know, Fincher, all those guys. I would put Ryan Coogler almost in that category. He is that great of a director, you know? And I think he's a big reason why The First Creed is a really great movie. You know, when I did my out-of-theater reaction, of course, I had a comment or two stating that, ooh, the Rocky fanboy, and he doesn't like anything that, uh, that's Creed-related. Bullshit. I applauded the last two movies. I even, I think I prefer Creed 2 over Creed 1. I've even stated that if you watch Rocky 4, Creed 2 is like a perfect companion to that movie. You can watch those two back-to-back, -back and, and, and it's awesome. Uh, also, I think this movie 
ends on kind of a downer, and I don't mean that in a good way, because you can have a movie with a somber ending, and I'm not giving anything away. I'm just saying, pacing-wise, it didn't have that um, wow factor, I guess, like um, you know a lot of the Rocky movies do, and even Creed. Usually when you when you leave one of these movies, you, you're kind of you know happy and elated and you're, you're fist pumping. Because of what they did at the end, it kind of felt like something was missing. And trust me guys, trust me, trust me, trust me, that is not a spoiler. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you see the movie, okay? Also, I gotta compare this to you know the, the Rocky movies and the Creed movies as far as like the fights go. Now, the choreography in the fights and the look of the fights in this movie is the biggest pro. But having stated that, I didn't get, especially in the final fight, I didn't get the magic that you have in a lot of those uh, earlier Rocky movies like Rocky 2, II, Rocky 4, hell, even Rocky 3, the fight with Clubber Lang. The emotion, the intensity is there. They did try something different, which is um, a kudos to them, but... Overall, I just don't think it had that heightened electricity, I guess. A lot of the fights in these movies, even though the fight with Drago, uh, you know, Drago's son in, in uh, Creed 2, it felt electric. It was awesome. You didn't really get that, I think, in the final fight in this movie, okay? It's good, but, you know, if you got to compare it to some of the earlier fights, no. And, you know, I was talking about Rocky 4, Rocky 2, again, one of the greatest freaking fight scenes and I think probably the most emotional fight scene I've ever seen. Yo Adrian, I did it. And, and by the way, that was one the last of like, you know, probably 20 takes. They tried so many different things and uh, Stallone just could not land on the, the, the thing that worked. That's what a great director does. He says, nope, that's not it. Let's keep going, let's keep going. And Stallone was notorious for driving the crew crazy because he was not satisfied you know and so the reason we end up with magic yo adrian i did it is because stallone is that caliber of a director he doesn't really get the credit he deserves in the director's chair sometimes you know the 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 cool scene with the snow in rocky balboa that was stallone being stubborn and saying no, we're we're gonna we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait because I think it's gonna snow. And sure enough, it snowed. Michael B. Jordan, I think this is a, a very good first outing as a director. I think he's got a lot to learn. I think uh, he'll get better. And I, I'm actually looking forward to what he comes up with next. Okay, this isn't a bad movie. You know, I would definitely give it. I guess we'll do the rating right now. I'll give it a high humdrum. I'll give Creed three a high humdrum. Okay. So anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on Creed 3. I will be doing a, a new ranking. I'm going to rank all these movies. Looking forward to doing that. Um, anyway, once you see it, let me know down in the comments. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum Dum out.